before we start today, I just want to send a word of hope to you that um, God is with us. We are living in uh, uh, difficult times and everywhere there is, there seems to be fear. And I want you to be assured, this is coming from me. Um, I'm a nurse and I work in the emergency room. And if I tell you that it is not scary, then I'm lying to you. If I tell you that sometimes I'm not nervous going to work, then I'm lying to you. But in all this, I know deep within me that I am covered. I know deep within me that this thing will not come near me. I do have a husband and three children who are toddlers. And so you can imagine the, you know, the natural um, nervousness when you go to work, especially working in the ER. And when you come back in the concerns, but the Bible says in Isaiah 41 verse 10, that fear not, I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will, I will help you. I will redeem you with my righteous right hand. It means that I am covered by God's dominant hand. My prayers to all healthcare workers all across the nations of the world, people who are suffering for the, from the infection, people who have lost loved ones because of the infections, God knows what he's doing. And so I want to assure you that no matter what your situation is, God has gotten you covered. Hi, so today's topic is leaders and cheerleaders in relationship. But all that we are looking for, or all that we should be in relationship is either to be a leader or a cheerleader. And um, of course, there are primary roles that you need to play. And so today, that's all that I'm going to be talking about. So what should you be looking for if you're a single woman? What should be, you be looking for? You know, when I was, um, I guess my teenage years, my cousins and I, we used to say that, oh, we are looking for thick, tall, pink lips, curly hair. Uh, you know, looking for a man. And then we had all those criteria. Of course, God fearing and everything. But um, <laughs> definitely, if you know me, I'm married and my husband is average size. Uh, he doesn't have curly hair. He's not, you know, <laughs> I don't know about pink lips and all that. But I'm very blessed with a good man, a God fearing man. But um, what you should look for is not all the exterior. It's not... Um, yeah, God fearing. It just came to my mind. God fearing and you know, good somebody who cares, who is caring, and somebody who is good and all that stuff. But the bottom of what you are looking for as a single woman is a leader. You are not looking for all that the all the other things falls under somebody who's a leader, someone who can lead you even in love somebody who can lead you in prayer, somebody who can lead you in studying the word of God. I think women, our very innate desire is to have a man who leads us. No matter how accomplished and independent you are, I think that every woman deep, 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 deep inside of them have a desire for their husbands to lead them. So young ladies, if you are looking or if somebody, you know, people are pursuing you right now, look for someone that you can follow. Their leadership. Their leadership in worshiping God. Their leadership in lifestyle. Like, for instance, when you go out, don't just, you know, go out and then, uh, you know, match things. I always say that people like matching outfits and all that. And it's cute. But did the person ask you how, does your parents know that you're going out? Somebody who thinks ahead of time. Don't, you know, somebody who gives you something to reason about don't just fall for anybody who is shallow and just going around doing anything you know something that i mostly appreciate for myself is you know when my husband leads us in prayer i really enjoy it you know and bible studies and those things and even in other you know things in the house i really really that kind of gets me you know it gets me to do other things that <laughs> he didn't be asked don't wait for the woman to come and tell you what to do. Don't wait for that girl to come and say that, so when are we going to have the wedding? So when are you going to propose? So when are you going to... No, you, you're slacking. You need to get it together. You need to learn to take responsibilities. And those of us who are married, please, it's not too late. If you have slacked or if you are not doing well, you need to also, you know, especially for the ladies, you need to pray for your man to be able to pick up that role as a leader. And as a man, you need to take responsibility and be ahead of the game. 
women this is a free table women really enjoy it when you are two steps ahead of us so the young men what you should be i hope that you're taking notes is that you should work on being a leader you should work on taking initiatives you should work on being thoughtful thinking ahead of time being a forecast man for instance someone a man who you know when you're dating thinks about your line of work where do you have market at as a nurse or as a consultant or as a financial manager where is your market they are not just talking to you about let's stay here and the wedding they are talking to you about where you could actually make a good living where to live they focus they think ahead of time like a man who is um who don't just move or want to buy a house at any neighborhood but you look at school district so you don't sit there for the woman or to come and tell you this is where we want to live. Women appreciate these little, little things. You know, like you go to church and then the man actually takes lead, you know, in getting you there or getting ready. That is also part of it. There are so many things that you can do as a leader or as a guy who is trying to date somebody by even learning about their parents, learning about their siblings, learning about what they are from, knowing what you need to do ahead of time. Even when you have to plan a wedding, all the things, you know, or, you know, even in little, little things like opening the car door, you know, people think that, yeah, that's cliche or whatever, but women enjoy it. And it's even better if we don't tell you to open the car doors. I love it. My husband will tell you, even if I tell you, you do it, I still enjoy it. So you need to be able to um, do all that kind of thing. Okay. And also for those of us who are married and you are, you know, for instance, you're watching TV in a house, you know, it's little, little things with your spouse don't wait for your your wife to come and say that oh let me put my head on your chest honey they relax you know that's a order sweethearts so as little as these things are when you take leadership in simple simple things like that it nourishes your relationship it nourishes the marriage so take steps be a leader don't just wait for the wife to say that oh you didn't do this for me and women are just looking for little little things they're looking for leadership in very very little things in minute areas so you ask me most guys will be like oh lord women are extra why do you have to do that because it provides safety it provides you know some sort of joy and safe room for women you know women do have innate desire to be protected, to be loved, to be shielded. And so that is why you want to do that. It gives the woman that safety, that, that safe place. And no matter how strong, and I've said that, no matter how strong any woman is or how independent any woman is, if a man takes that initiative, it helps them to thrive, to do better, and to even flourish more. And they will give you whatever you desire. Don't go and lie in any young man's bosom saying that Mrs. K said go and lie though, please. I didn't prescribe that. I'm saying that look for leaders in young men. And people who are already married, please, let's take a lead in the way we handle our spouses. So guys, I have asked a lot of you what you want in a woman or what somebody that you like to date or marry. And a lot of you say that, you know, I want somebody who's called fearing, which is good. Somebody who has big butts. I don't know about that. Somebody who has attackers and defenders. Somebody who is who can cook. Somebody who dresses well. Somebody who supports me. And, you know, prayerful woman and all of that. All those things are great. But let me do the math for you. What you are actually looking for, listen, take a pen and paper and write, is a cheerleader. You are looking for somebody that will cheer you on. As a man, God has given you a mandate. That is what you call a man. You have a mandate. You are looking for a cheerleader. Your innate desire is for the woman to cheer you on. So don't just focus on the exterior, like I said before, on all the attackers and defenders. They help. They are good. But what you are looking for is somebody who will support you. Why would I say that you need a cheerleader? You need somebody who will place in you their vote of confidence, no matter what the situation is. You know, when you look at the story in the Bible, when Jesus was going to um, perform the first miracle at the wedding, and um, Mary was like, oh, Jesus, um, they don't have any more wine. Then Jesus is like, woman, please chill. This is not the time, man. But what did Mary tell the people? That whatever he asked you to do, do it. That is the kind of woman you are looking for. And ladies, be that kind of woman. If you are listening, please take note. 
if you are going out with your man or if you're already married with, to your man, be that person that will support them, that will give them their vote. That's part of cheerleading. You know in your heart that you believe the stuff that is in that person. You know, especially when they take their rightful leadership positions. You know, for instance, like you go to a uh, church as a Christian, your husband is giving a testimony. You go and stand behind them. You go and support them. Even if the testimony is going down south, you stand there. You sing to support them. You know, all that kind of stuff. If you're, uh, you're at home and your husband or the you know, as a father, he gives instructions to um, the children. Don't go behind him and say different things to the children. You have to give that confidence. Even if you you, you, are, you are not there yet, won't catch a vision of crime. You have to give that vote of confidence. Of course, again, you have to support their vision or their plan. Being a cheerleader, it's not, you know, when um, basketball players and different teams are playing, they are not, um, the cheerleaders don't just come there to just, uh, do all the acrobatics. They know what they are there for. They support the vision of the team, which is to win. So you are there to support him, that man to win. So look out for that. Is that person that you're looking for, single lady, is, that, is he somebody that you can cheer him on? Do you believe in their vision? Because that will give you the power to cheer them on. And also don't, um, why? Men are looking for, um, um, cheerleaders who do not whine of course cheerleaders don't whine when you see them shaking and all that do you see anybody with a frown face they are all happy and jolly and we'll saying tambourine and all that they are not whining that is what they are looking for no complaints you know of course there will be times that you would um you know have concerns and other things that you can share but what a man truly is looking for is somebody that will not just whine and nagging it says in the bible that a nagging uh, a, a man better lives on top of a roof than he habits or live in the same house with an again spouse. So that is what men really are looking for. Cheer them on. Give be their, their biggest cheerleader. My grandmother used to call my grandfather daddy. When she says daddy, me cry. You know, I'm not daddy cry. I still feel the vibe in the thingy. She knew how to cheer him on. And I, I love that so much. And I learned about that. The Bible says in Proverbs, I think Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, it says that a virtuous woman or virtuous wife is a crown for husband, but a disgraceful woman is like cancer in his bones. When you go to Pentecost, they will say, say oh, you're a Church of Pentecost, they will say, oh, you're a oh, you're a say. You know, so a man, a crown is you know most of the time when you get a crown is equal to or it's associated with cheers whenever you win any game or any tournament and they are given a crown it accompanies it is accompanied by cheering so that is what your mandate is as a woman in a relationship or comparing women and men in relationship or as a wife so in the house or even um couples who are dating and uh, wanting to marry Make sure that you are not, um, you know, bad biting your mate. I don't even know why people do that. You love this person. You want to marry them. Meanwhile, you go behind their back and talk about them. Don't do that. What, what, then who are you going to marry? Who are you going to spend the rest of your time with? You gossip about him with your friends? Don't do that. That is not supportive. You have to stand by them. That's what they are looking for. You have to cheer them on. And I, I brought this part to the end. Cheering them on, apart from all these things, you have to have words. You know, some women don't talk, master. Men want to hear. They too, they want to hear what you think of them. Let them know. Hey, Bema. Hey. Everything go be because you are in the house. Oh, daddy is here. We are good. You know, different, different things. You need to cheer daddy on when they come back from work or even when your husband comes back from work. Just take the extra effort. I know sometimes it's kind of like, uh, da, 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 da. But take the extra effort. Kiss them. Kiss them well. Sometimes very passionately. I'm not telling you single people to go and kiss somebody. It's like giving, saying thank you to them is a form of you know cheerleading when you appreciate somebody when they do the least things you know it's not about when they are doing the biggest things because when you do something notable everybody knows that oh yeah, yeah you deserve cheer but it's even more important when they know that they are not up to par or they are not doing their best but you are behind them and say daddy you can do it hey you that's why i married you you are the man.com
You know what I'm saying? So keep cheering them on and men also be a leader and they will all have a beef. By the time this quarantine is over, we'll learn some nuggets that will help us. In 2021, we're going to be great. We're going get, to get into good relationship and our marriage is going to be mwah. So if your partner is not doing this, just be patient with them. Give them time, pray for them and give them tips, you know, or they can watch this video. They will learn a thing or two and your relationship will be lit. <laughs> Thank you, see you later. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. Thank you for watching, Mommy.